Hey friends, so welcome to Chemistry Lover and in this video I will be talking about a very important topic and uh, you should know this if you are a organic chemist because it will help you in your interview and uh, questions will also be there in your competitive exams from this topic. So this topic is nothing but what will be the multiplicity of the signals when you use TLSO D6 and methanol D uh, in your NMR sample. So if you do NMR, uh, you will know that we use uh, methanol D and DMSO D6 and also chloroform D uh, for, uh, the uh, for the NMR. And uh, these questions are favorite question for the interviewer in many kind of interviews and also in case of CSI net exam, uh, this question they ask several times that what will be the multiplicity of the signal which comes from DMSO D6 and methanol D. And uh, I have seen that uh, many students uh, just don't know what will be the answer. They have hazy idea or in some cases they are totally uh, unaware of the actual fact, right? So, I will explain this thing in this video. So, first, let us take the case of DMSO D6. So, this is the structure of DMSO. You know, this is the normal DMSO dimethyl sulfoxide, right? Now, what is DMSO D6? So, DMSO D6 is basically this. Uh, so, in this case, all the hydrogens are replaced by deuterium. Okay? So deuteriated DMSO and this is why it is called D6. Six deuteriums are there. This is DMSO D6 and methanol D is normal methanol is MUH and methanol D is where all the hydrogens are replaced by deuterium. This is called methanol D. Now you know we take the proton NMR, right? So deuterium will not give any signal in proton NMR. So the first question is uh, if you uh, look at the NMR, uh, when you run NMR and you prepare sample in DMSO D6 or uh, methanol D, you will see that there will be a peak for, uh, corresponding to methanol or corresponding to DMSO. Now, if uh, deuterium is there, which is which will not respond in proton NMR, so how the signal comes? This is the first question of the interview that how the NMR signal comes. Okay, and. Uh, I am sure that many of you don't know what will be the answer. So actually, when you buy uh, the DMSO D6 or methanol D from vendor from market, they will not give you the 100% pure uh, sample or 100% pure solvent, right? So you uh, so the basic thing is you cannot purchase a uh, methanol D or DMSO D6 where 100% purity is there. So, they, uh, in your solvent, some uh, molecule will be there where you will have sorry, where you will have one deuterium replaced by hydrogen. So, this impurity will always be there, right? Now, this and in case of methanol D also, you will have the impurity like this, okay? Now, if you consider the DMSO D6 case, so this proton which, uh, which is there as an impurity, this is actually responsible for the NMR signal. Now, if you consider this proton, what will be the uh, intensity of its signal? Now, you can see the very simple rule is to find out the intensity is 2Ni plus 1, right? Here you can see deuteriums, two deuteriums are there. So, n value will be 2. So, 2 into 2 and its i value is 1. So, into 1 plus 1 that is, it will have 4 plus 1 that is 5. So, you will have a quintet. Right? So, we will have a quintet signal. So, in case of DMSO D6, the signal which you will get corresponding to DMSO D6 will be quintet. And this will be due to the splitting by this two deuterium. 
Now let us see what will be the case of uh, methanol. So in case of methanol also you can see two joint areas are there and same formula will be applied. So here also you will get two in red. So this is the case of one H enema or proton enema. Now if you consider the C13 enema, what will be the signal? Okay. So in case of C13 enema, so then you have to consider so of course there will be some impurity uh, like where the deuterium is replaced by its hydrogen but most of the solvent will be all this D and when you are recording C13 level there is no problem with this because deuterium will just uh, do the splitting it has no effect on the uh, C13 enema so now if you want to calculate the uh, splitting or uh, the splitting pattern for C13, you have to consider all these six deuteria, but you can see these three and these three they are equivalent. So there are actually two, uh, there are actually only one type of uh, splitting uh, atoms or the atoms for which the uh, C13 enema is splitted. This is actually for only one kind. So we have to consider. So this molecule is actually symmetric, so we have to consider only one part. So when we consider the splitting of C13, we will have two here, N value will be three because three deuteria are there and one, uh, its I value is one. So two A9 plus one will give you six plus one, seven. So it will give you a septet, right? And the similar is the case of uh, methanol D because here also you have to consider this one deuterium and here again you have uh, N value 3. So both in case of BMSO D6 and in case of methanol D you will have a septet signal for the C13 enema. So for C13 enema it is septet and for uh, H1 enema or 1H enema it will be quintet. So this is very important and this is how uh, the signal or the splitting comes. So I hope it will clear all of your doubts and it will help you in your competitive exam and your interviews. So thank you for watching and if you are new in this channel, subscribe my channel. Best of luck.